It says it's going live. I think it's live. Hi! Can you hear me? Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. I'm gonna assume you can hear me. I'm like all decked out in costumes because it's a workspace. It's under construction. Anyway, greetings and welcome to an exciting improvised episode of Veronica Explains. I'm Veronica and we are doing a live stream where I customize KDE Plasma because I can, because it'll be fun. Um, this comes from my video that I did recently about Red Hat, and this isn't gonna be about Red Hat, and watch the other video if you wanna see it, but I'm hoping to, I just realized I can hear myself upstairs. That is weird. Okay, um, hopefully you can't hear it. I'm hearing myself on a delay. Um, so what I figured out is that people wanted to know how I'd customize KDE Plasma. I had like a little bit of like bling going on with it. And I'd like to try to emulate this, but I have to go turn that off upstairs. So chat amongst yourself. Um, I should give you a topic. Uh, the let's talk about Debian and Fedora and what you like better. Discuss. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see what you all said. All right, let's see. Um, arch. <laughs> Somebody said Arch. That's great. Um, you know, Arch is a good, why is YouTube telling me I should insert ads? I'm not gonna insert ads here. Um, Addy says Slackware, I'm not surprised. Um, <laughs> Slackware's good, Slackware's fun. Um, yeah, okay, yep, everybody's fighting. I, I love it. Okay, we got discussions. I, I see lots of Debian, a little bit of Fedora. I'm gonna make a poll. Let's, let's do a poll. I'm just kind of curious. This is a curiosity thing. Debian v. Fedora. For the curious. Okay. So there we go. All right, we got this going on. So I'd love to know what you're all using because I think this is a lot of fun. And now I'm not hearing an echo of myself from upstairs. So <laughs> anyway, this is this is like an actual under construction basement space. And I made a prop because, you know, it'd be fun. But um, the idea here is I am going to be able to record in this space in winter and be able to leave stuff out for longer than, you know, a few hours while I'm recording because it's really challenging to do that in a shared space, especially when you have a child. Um, and I do. So that it's just a thing where we're moving the, the setup down here and I'm in the middle of construction. Um, it's very, my laundry room's right over there. We're sectioning off the laundry room and building a little, cute basement area in here. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, lots of people. We got Pop! OS. Somebody said Windows 11. Okay, have fun customizing Windows 11. Um, KDE on Nix OS. Yep, elementary. Okay, there's a good mix of stuff here going, but it looks like between Fedora and Debian, we got a lot of Debian. That doesn't surprise me. Um, I like Debian. I've talked about Debian recently, and I, I think it's a good fit. Anyway, I have a Debian. It's right here. Let's uh, switch to it. Okay, so hopefully you can still hear me. Can you still hear me? And I bet you can't see, I gotta set up screen mirroring on this thing. So let's mirror that screen. Um, this is fun. Uh, let's do, yep, and then device built in and device how do you mirror it? I forget how to do that. I think you just, is it like you plop it right in there? I forget how you mirror. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing because you all can't see it. So there's the thing. I'm like way over here now because this is my OBS screen. And I know there's a way to mirror it. Uh, 
I, I feel like I gotta like set the one in the other. Yep, there we go. Okay. And then hit apply. Okay, and it's mostly happy, but it doesn't like that I got some like goofiness going on here with, with scale. I'm gonna set the scale to 100% just to make it easy. Oop, almost, we're almost at working. All right, keep, and then put these on top of each other. There we go, and hit apply, and you should be able to see what I see. There we go, okay. So this is live, I'm making it up as I go. Okay, so looking at the comments real quick before I dive in, it's a lot of Kubuntu, Boris says OS2. Boris, hats off to you for OS2. Alfonso says, I use Fedora. There, there's a good mix of both of them, I think. It's, it's good. Um, let's see, so... Oh, thank you. Pablo says the happiness is infectious. I try to be positive. I, I, I am this person. I'm usually a pretty happy going person and like, it's important to be happy. So, um, anyway, let's, let's have some fun with this. Let's just see what we can now. I have, here's a goofy thing. I have, I should show you in big. Um, I have two mice here and like, that's going to be a thing because one of these mice is for the computer I'm working with, and the other mouse is for the computer controlling the stream. So this is gonna be fun. Okay, so I'm setting the other com the other mouse aside, and let's do, okay, so you can see I got display configuration. So I forget if I'm using X. Let's see, this is fun, okay. I'm going to show you system settings real quick. So I'm do I'm I'm using the mouse system settings and about Yep, okay. So I am on Wayland. I don't know if you can see that. That's it's in there and I I this is a this is the ThinkPad I've been using for some of my other videos. Um this is hot. I'm going to take this off. <laughs> this is this is fun. Like I I made that. That's that's kind of clever. Um but it's hot. I'm going to just set that aside for now. Okay, so we've got uh, KDE Plasma 5.27.5. Um, this is a my ThinkPad E490. It's um, got Intel graphics. It's a pretty run-of-the-mill, you know, less expensive ThinkPad. Um, picked it up used. Usually buy laptops used if it's for the channel or just goofing around on. Um, and it's running Wayland. Um, so that's exciting. So, all right, let's do, so we're doing Wayland. Now, now first thing I wanna fix, I don't like the bar at the bottom. So I'm gonna move that. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, it's been a bit since I did this. I went to enter edit mode and I just, did I drag it up here? Yep, drag it up. Now I feel like KDE Plasma would benefit from a, a wizard that asks you, where do you want this? That's a thing I think would be really helpful because this drag to move, here's the problem. If I see this icons only task manager and I've hovered over that, I might think I should drag there, but you shouldn't because when you do that, it takes your, see how I'm moving these icons now? Now I'm moving my icons around and that's no good. That's usually not what people want to do. So I feel like that's a missed opportunity. They should do something along the lines of like what Pop! OS does with, Kate, with their desktop where it asks you where you want the dock and it asks you some of these things. I feel like that kind of first run wizardry is super helpful. I see somebody saying floating panel, please. We'll, we'll get, we'll get there. Don't, don't worry. Um, I should mention too, while I'm at it, that I do more of these live streams, at least recently for patrons. So if that's something you want to do, support the channel. Um, I think support.linux.mom is the website I've set up that details the links of how to do it. Um, okay. So we've got the panel up at the top. Now let's make it float. So floating panels in here 
if I'm remembering correctly, I just click on more options and I can check the box for floating panel. And now it's a floating panel. Now, there's some things about this that I don't particularly care for, but I'm gonna free up some of the space here. So, so now we've got a floating panel. I like, you know, the rounded corners I think are a little much. I tend to like square corners. Um, so let's see if I can pull that out. If I'm remembering correctly, there was a way to do that. And now I'm not remembering how to do it. You know what, I'm gonna make it bigger. Just for YouTube's sake, I'm gonna make this bigger. There we go. I don't normally have it this big, but this will be fine. Desktops and panels. Okay, was it here? Nope. Nope, it's not that. Okay, I'm playing with this. Darth Vader asks, have I ever tried a tiling window manager? Yes, I'm actually using Sway right now as my everything. I, I've actually been off of... Um, I've actually been off of KDE Plasma for the last week. I've been using Sway exclusively. Um, it's fun. It's it's really cool. Um, we'll see if I like it long term. That's kind of another thing, but you know we're gonna get there. Okay, I'm gonna leave the rounded corners for now. We'll come back to that if we come back to it. Um, so the big thing is I want a side panel, and this is a thing people were asking me about in the in the uh, in the comments for my last video. So we're gonna add a brand new panel from scratch. I'm gonna go in here and I believe I can just do, there, there are some defaults, I'm gonna pick an empty. And now it added it at the bottom. I'm gonna enter edit mode by right click and then hit enter edit mode. I'm gonna move it to the side. So there's that. And then there's at the top and the bottom, there's these little teeny tiny margin sections. And I'm gonna adjust those there's the bottom, and there's the top. I think that's what you need. Now, I want this to be in the center, though. So, panel alignment, I'm gonna say center. There we go. So now it's center aligned. I'm gonna make this smaller height-wise, but then the panel width, we're gonna bring it up. Can I bring it up? Can I not type here? Apparently you can't type there. That seems odd. Okay, so there's that. All right, so now we've, now I don't normally go 70 pixels wide for my panel. I'm making it bigger because, you know, little screens and everything and I'll just hit the microphone. Um, so let's make that float now, match the other one. Cool, so now we have a panel. It has nothing on it. It's a panel. Let's see. Andrew S. says it can't beat Microsoft's cascading windows. Are you talking about that thing that happens at the end of Solitaire? Because, I mean, that's pretty neat. Um, it's been about that long since I used a Microsoft product every day. Okay, so now we need to add widgets. And the widget I want to add is the icons only thing. It's the icons only task manager. I believe this is the one. There we go. Okay, so this has my currently available apps and all that stuff. So now we're going in here and now I've got the widgets on the side. Now I wanna see if when I go into a new application, does it show up here? Does it automatically scale? So we'll open LibreOffice. Looks like it is. Okay. So this automatically is scaling. I didn't have to mess with that at all. And that's working okay, um, which is exciting. Um, let's see. Did somebody... Did I miss a super chat here? Let's see. 
Oh, thank Elatrion uh, tipped me and said Linux is awesome and so are you. Thank you. I, 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 Linux is awesome and so are you. Thank you so much for the tip. It's very helpful. Um, tips and all this stuff, it does really help because like, yeah, I'm, I'm slowly migrating to doing creative stuff full time. And um, yeah, all the support is just, it's super helpful. It's very appreciated and it will make more videos happen. You know, I've been able to be a little bit more active this summer than I was last summer. And I, it's because of the support I'm able to take time away from other paid gigs. So very much appreciate that. Um, anyway, this is working fine. I hate the layout of these buttons though. So real quick, Let's move those buttons. I'm gonna go into the window section, I think. I, I just hit the, the little like application menu thing in window settings. I might have to go into, let's go into settings proper. System settings, there we go. Sick Pup asks while I'm doing this, will you head back to Pop when Cosmic comes out? Um, I will definitely try Pop. Um, I love what they're doing with Cosmic. It looks super cool. That perfect blend of the differences between uh, the differences between what you have on um, a tiling window manager and a traditional desktop. But um, yeah, I'm getting used to Debian as a, as a regular system. And, and I might just keep it this way for a while. We shall see. Um, I can always use what Pop! OS is doing on Debian. So that, that works too. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot. Um, that could be like a, like a fun game. What was I doing? Oh, I have to set the application setting. Okay. So Window, is it window management? No, it's not window man, is it? Okay, window behavior, focus. See, this is what I'm saying. Like a first run tutorial that helps you pick some of this basic stuff. Which, where do you want your icons to be? Be very helpful. Um, let's see, title bar actions, no. Window actions, no. I don't think this is it. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, is it an appearance? I think it's an appearance window, appearance, global theme, window decorations. Okay, so now I can move. So I've been liking when I use this. So I, I spend a lot of time, especially when I'm doing creative work, um, in high school with the icons on the left because I was working on a Mac, especially for things like, you know, AV club and stuff like that. Um, so I got used to the icons on the left and I used to use, what was it? Window blinds? Somebody leave a comment if I'm remembering the right thing. It was the last time I used Microsoft Windows, it was Windows XP and XP was new. And there was a program I could use to skin it so that it acted more like a Mac. And that was, um, I think it was called window blinds. I was able to move these icons. I love the icons on Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. I love the icons on the other side. So I wish that the system automatically let me pick this. Just let me swap everything. Come on. Oh, geez. It's so futzy. Oh, come on. Yeah, it should just ask me right away if you want to do it this way and then just set it. Because I think it's it's pretty common that people say like, oh, I want <laughs> I want window icons on the left or I want window icons on the right. Especially if they're <laughs> it's so painful, especially if they're coming from another system. So that's me. That's my preference. Other people can disagree. And that's OK. All right. So I hit apply and now my icons are on the left. Stardock, windows blinds. That might be it. Window blinds. Yep. Lots of, lots of window blinds. Um, God, it was a lot of fun. I, I loved, I, I loved tweaking it. And eventually I, I think I had a window blinds that mimicked Gnome 2 for, and I don't remember if that was on Vista. I don't remember if, if, cause I did try Vista. I, I remember trying Vista. I don't think I gave it a as much of a, like by that point I was pretty embedded in Linux, but it was a lot of fun. 
I actually did a video about my the specifics. If it's the Warty Warthog video on my channel. If you go digging around my channel and find the Warty Warthog video, that's that's the one where I talked about it. Saga Winch says, why is this making me miss BOS? Oh, BOS. If I have, I, I, I gotta play with this more. Um, there's a lot I want to do with BOS on the channel. Um, it's just, I want to get through OS2 first. I want to do like a, like an OS2 month where like everything is OS2 and I'm talking about OS2 and then maybe like I'll do some regular videos and then after a while I'll come back with like haiku month and we'll, <laughs> do like all kinds of goofy stuff in haiku. Um, that'll be a ton of fun. Okay. So we got the icons where I want them. Applicate. There's, these are the application styles. They need more styles. I will say like, give me like 15 styles here. Cause there's a lot of different things I might like and stuff I don't like and stuff to play with. Now, I'm going to go with the dark theme for now. Um, I think I got the dark theme on my KDE setup upstairs where my editing rig is, um, which is not down here yet because it's not ready and I don't want to get sawdust in the editing rig. Okay, fonts. This one's a big one. These fonts are too small for me, even without YouTube being in the way. So I'm going to make them all bigger. And I think there's a way to force... Yep, adjust all fonts. Can I just size? Like, let's make it all 12 here on YouTube. Normally, I think I go with 11, but nope. It, did it literally make everything 12 except for the small font? No, I think it raised the small font up to 10 from 8, which is nice. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's a little easier to read. I, I like this this a lot more. Somebody's saying, switch to Gen 2. It's so easy. That that might be bullying. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> That's not a legit thing. Um, I wouldn't recommend Gen 2 for... Um, if, if you're a beginner, that's not quite the way. In my opinion, anyway. Okay, so I think that's good. Okay, so we've got this. It looks, bre it looks better. Now I want to get rid of this up here. Let's, let's get rid of that. I think I can enter edit mode and then we remove this. So we're going to get rid of that. And for whatever reason, it shifted everything in my system tray off to the left, which is weird. Now Sway has, I should become big again for this because I want to actually like lay it out in the window. Okay, so Sway has this kind of goofy where like you can get, you can set at least with Waybar, which is what I'm using right now on my Sway config. You can set like the 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 left, the center, and the right, and that actually works in the Sway config, and it's pretty slick. Um, I don't think you can do that in plasma with the task bars or the, whatever we're calling this, the, uh, panels. And I wish you could, I think that would be really nice. So I have to add a spacer and it added it in kind of a goofy place. So I'm going to take that and we're going to see if we can slide it over to the point where I'm happy with its location. We were almost there and then I moved too far over. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we have a nice blank space in our panel. I feel like this this is almost like um, Bob Ross. Like, does this feel like Bob Ross in the chat? Like, like somebody's painting a picture, like I should have one over there that you can't see. Do you all know that Bob Ross was like looking at somebody else's, look it up, it's kind of interesting. Um, he was watching somebody else's painting or not somebody else's painting, I'm saying that wrong. He's watching a painting he did before as he was filming doing the painting. So like it wasn't completely like just made up from scratch but he doesn't explain that in every video, so, or in every episode. He wasn't painting somebody else's painting, as far as I know. That's me saying the wrong thing on live TV. Yeah, happy little spacer over here, some happy little icons. It's 
put a little tree in this happy little desktop. Okay, so next I want to get rid of this. I, I hate the, the double layer, the time on the top and the, the date on the bottom. So let's adjust this because I prefer whole thing. Nope, apparently it's not there. Okay, I prefer seeing it on two. Nope, that's still not what I want. I prefer seeing it on one line. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, does it show alternatives? No, that's not what I want. Does anybody use fuzzy clock? What does fuzzy clock even look like? like is that helpful? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> who does this? I mean, maybe somebody does. If you do it, leave a comment. Because, um, like, I don't know how, like, I, I'm not sure what goes into that. Um, I'm not sure how this is useful. Like, if I'm looking at a clock as, like, a clock, like, as in I want to see what time it is, I usually want it down to, like, five minutes of accuracy. This technically is five minutes of accuracy. I don't know how long it's going to be five minutes of accuracy. Like... At what point, now, now I'm just, I'm, now I just want to hack it, like, fuzzy clock settings, what are our options? Accurate to fuzzy, okay, so you can get pretty accurate or you can get really fuzzy. How, how fuzzy is, oh, <laughs> it says end of week. <laughs> That's helpful. That, I, okay, uh, that, that might be okay. <laughs> oh, that's, that's delightful. Okay, now what are the other realms of fuzziness? Noon, <laughs> that's just wrong. Okay, and then the next one, lunch. <laughs> okay, I, I started off wondering why anybody would do this. This is delightful. I was wrong. This is absolutely thrilling. Um... We, yeah, we've got to, we got to implement more fuzzy clocks. <laughs> this is great. Um, half past one. And now, what's this say? Still half past one. Okay. Um, I've been converted. I'm now a fuzzy clock person. Um, we'll leave that for now. I don't remember exactly how I got it all in one line. It might be just a font size issue. I, I don't remember. Um, but that's one of my criticisms of plasma configuration is I feel like some, and I, I do to their credit I think that the plasma team is is kind of leaning in this direction they they provide a lot of options and then not a lot of uh paths if that makes sense like I I love it, I love the idea of a wizard for configuration that asks you questions about how you want to use it and then it pumps out a configuration which you can then tweak beyond that. That I think is really useful. Starting you off with all of the widgets right away is kid in a candy store territory and you can end up making regrettable decisions that way. That's at least my thing. Um, Lee says, hey, I didn't know Veronica had live streams. Gonna hang out. Well, hi, Lee. I'm glad to see you here. Um, and yeah, I do occasional live streams. I do them more often for patrons. This this is a live stream I'm doing right now because I know I haven't done a video in a little bit that's public. And that's because I've been constructing. So it's construction related issues. So that's, that's the idea. Um, Okay, so 25 to 2, we better keep moving. Um, so I want to add a global menu. Um, I love the global menu. Let me tell you about that. This is the global menu. If you've seen a Mac, and other operating systems have done this too. Um, I've seen this across a lot of different platforms. Um, there's a menu at the top for each application that's currently got focus. And the menu is always in the same place, which I like for me personally because I'm kind of a muscle memory person. So this is where Sway and window managers might actually be a good thing for me because then I can implement menus with keyboard shortcuts. But that doesn't work for everybody. 
And I love the idea of a global menu for folks who get their information that way, who want to find information in the same place across most applications. That said, the global menu in in KDE Plasma, I, I think it's using Dbus. I don't remember exactly how. Somebody will probably tell me how it's being used, or they'll they'll shoot me an email or something afterward. Um, the I think because it's using Dbus, if I'm remembering the explanation correctly, and I might not be, that certain applications don't work through Dbus the same way, and so they don't necessarily expose a menu that can be digested and then exported out as a global menu. So Firefox comes to mind, and you'll see that in a little bit. But here, let's play. So I'm going to add the global menu. We're going to start with Add Widgets, and then I forget if I have to download it. Nope, it's right there. So it comes in there, global menu, bam. And I think that's all it did. I wish it showed me a sample global menu when I added one, but it doesn't. Um, so now I open up a program. Let's say Dolphin should be in there. And you can see a global menu. Now, this is in a lousy place, so let's edit this and move some stuff around. See, there, now it says global menu here. I wish it would have said that when I first entered it. I want the global menu to be right about there. So that looks good. So this is, it's awesome. I love having the global menu. Now, if I close this out, Let's go to Discover. So here's another program. You can you should see a global menu pop up. Oh, maybe not. Discover apparently does not have the global menu functionality. Dolphin has it. I know Console has it. Let's pull up Terminal. So there's that. Which what one of the things that I like about this global menu system here is that now I can take my terminal and I can get rid of a bunch of stuff that was in the inside the terminal. You know, like if I can find new tab, I mean, I think it's just control T to, for new tab, isn't it? Maybe not. What's the control shift T? Jeez. Okay, so yeah, if I wanted a new tab, I can do it that way. Um, it's very, I'm, I'm back to the mouse after a week of sway, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, but I like this. I, I think this is neat. So that's a thing I did. Now I'm going to make the font on that bigger, if I can. And it does offer single button. This, I think, mimics Unity, if I'm remembering correctly. I might be wrong. Um, I wonder if the font just isn't pulling in because of because um, I changed the fonts and haven't done a restart. I'm gonna restart and make it make it prettier. While I do that, I'm gonna look at the comments. Let's see. Okay. Arrived late. Did you use KDE back in the V3 days? Um, do I miss anything from back then? How about Conqueror being one step for file, one stop for file and web browsing? Okay, I liked Conqueror. I will say that, and I liked using Conqueror as a web browser. I did use KDE. Um, I used OpenSUSE on Plasma, or not Plasma. It was KDE. Um, a good long while ago, and I loved it. I, I thought it was it was fantastic. It was a great desktop for me. I used um, like a lot of the KDE fives while I was on Arch. When I was an Arch user for a few years, um, after I'd kind of moved away from Ubuntu, and I went through a period of distro hopping and ended up on Arch until Pop OS happened. Um, so. I used, I don't think I used KDE 3. I might have. I don't remember. I, I, I remember trying it and being, I think I used 3. I think it was 4 that I didn't like. If, if I'm remembering, 4 was kind of controversial. It was like KDE, I, I remember 2. I remember 3. 4 I don't have a lot of memory of. And then 5 happened. So, okay, let's see if we can get back in. Um, huh? If I can type my password, 
There we go. So as I should check on my poll. Oh, Debian is still winning. Okay. I think I think my my crowd might be a Debian crowd. Okay. So we've got this. Now if I open up a program, nope, we still have little teensy weensy text here. I wonder. I mean, how do you change the font size on that? Maybe you can't? Maybe, I wonder if it just descends out, out of system settings. Let's, let's try that. Hey, Nova Spirit. Um, the, thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. And um, go check out Nova Spirit Tech. That's one of my favorite channels. I, I love the stuff. Um, I, I think they've been doing uh, some stuff around like um, keys for sysadmins, like uh, recovery utilities. And I, I love that series because like it's all stuff. It reminds me of the stuff that kind of got me into system administration in the first place, which was uh, helping Windows users fix things when they were broken. And um, Nova Spirit's recent um, few videos on the different USB key options that are currently available that have like they're chock full of Windows utilities. It's it's really kind of neat stuff that I know for me, at least I forwarded a couple of those videos on to uh, like folks who have said, hey, my kid's thinking about getting into system administration. I that's great channel. Very, very highly recommend. Um, yes, USB boot tools are fun. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so, um, what was I doing? Oh, I have to tweak the fonts. Okay, so is it picking up from toolbar font? Maybe, what if I make this bigger? Or menu, is it menu? Well, let's just try stuff. Let's see if it works, it might not. Okay, so I made this 14, does that get any bigger? I see nothing, okay, so we're gonna make this smaller. This shouldn't be this hard. That's, that's one of the things I'm gonna say. Like, I, this, process of figuring this out maybe should be a little easier yep lee just said nova spirit has some awesome vids going through a bunch of the Pi videos yep yeah ab absolutely no it's it's excellent stuff okay well i don't know how to make this bigger Is it does it is it descending off a of general? Let's let's find out. Okay, that seemed to do something, but like that's doing a lot more than I'm expecting it to. Window title maybe, but see, it's not a window title. So if it's descending off of that, no. That's it's see, it's kind of frustrating. Like I'm not sure what. It'd be nice if I could inspect this, you know, like right click on it and tell me where it's pulling that font from or like somewhere in here, like maybe an about or something. It shows me here's where it's pulling this font from because like this, I mean, it's good, but you know, it could use more. And I know that the global menu, I don't think it's a core component of Plasma. It's probably a volunteer building it and they're doing a good job, but I think what Plasma and KDE could do is expose some of this information so that we as end users can provide maybe better bug reports or better uh, fixes ourselves. Like if I knew where this was descending from, maybe I would add a feature for changing the size or you know something like that but when it's completely hidden and i don't know i have to end up digging into it and then i'm very distractible i get distracted and before i know it i've forgotten that i was even worried about it in the first place and then you just end up living with it so let's see the settings should highlight steven says the settings should highlight which fonts will change when you go to edit it i love that that would be really cool i don't think it does that now but if it did that would be that would be slick okay so we've got the global menu. Now, one thing I added to my settings on my other computer 
is I tweaked it so it also included the name of the currently running program. And that I don't think you can do natively. I think I had to do some, some downloads for that. So let's go do it. I'm going to go enter edit mode and we have to add a widget and I think I had to download a widget. So we're going to go to get new widgets and I forget what it was called. It's probably application name. So I'm going to try that. And this is a way you can get new widgets, but again, it's from the community, which, you know, as always, watch where you're getting stuff from and nope, I don't see it. It's not there. So I see better application menu. These are not the ones I was thinking of though. See, I should go, I should end up running upstairs again and seeing if I can find it. Let's try name. Maybe that's going to give me, nope, I don't see it here. Program? No, nope, I don't see it here. Take a break. That looks interesting. Okay. Um, well, I can't find it, so you know what that means. It's time to Google. Today's Googling will be performed by DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo. The browser that isn't Google. Okay. KDE Plasma. Um current running application in widget. See what that tells me. No. I found this once and now I can't remember what it is. Try window title. Yep. Okay. That was good. Okay. KDE plasma window title. Now I'm just, I'm just, you know what? I can make this bigger for you. Window title applet. I bet this is it. Yep. Okay. We're going to try that. Yes. Thank you. Happy camper. Appreciate that. Okay. So let's see if I go into enter, if I go into add widgets and then let's try window title. Nope. See that does, it's not there. So I think I have to get new and then download new. And then from here, window title, window title applet, that might be it. Application title. I think this is the one, why didn't this show up when I was looking? Maybe it did, but here, let's try this one. Let's, let's do this one first. So, okay. Open, let's open the home page just cause I want to see it's by, um, I always like shouting people out when I'm going to use something, when I'm going to download something they did in the middle of a live stream. P-S-I-F-I-D-O-T-O-S on GitHub. Applet window title. Um, it looks like last commit was September 24th, 2022, which is around the time of the same release. 0.7.1. This, does it have a, a number on it? I don't see a number. 0.7.1. Okay, so let's try that one. Martin says, people think this is beautiful. Looks like a mixed style mess to me. Every operating system is a mixed style mess, though. That's the thing. There's no such thing as coherence. Like, Windows is an incoherent mess where you have at least two control panels. You have some application menu processes seem to descend from Windows 3.1 still. Um, some of it looks really slick and some of it doesn't. Uh, Windows 11 just added to that complexity by mixing and matching styles over and over and over again. Um, 
It's really weird. Mac OS does a better job of this in my opinion, but it's far from perfect. There's all kinds of issues with, uh, you know, you an application designed by somebody who just did not take into account Apple's design standards, and suddenly the menu bar isn't working as expected or doesn't include all the menus, or there's a menu inside of a menu or you still have to click inside the application to get to what you need. I'm remembering Spotify being that way a long time ago. It might be better now. Um, it's, it's, every desktop has its gripes. And, you know, the, the superior desktop, if you ask me, is just like a TTY. Like, I think we had this figured out in the teletype era, and that's what I like. But we can't live in that world anymore and still, like, make money and do job things and have calls like this and do all kinds of fun stuff. So that is not going to happen. Um, we are just going to accept what we have. Okay, so we're going back in. Add widgets. Now... I think we decided it was called window title. I see it. I'm adding it. There it is. I can actually see it right away. So now it's unfortunately in the wrong place. So we're going to drag that over to the side of the global menu. So now let's open up an application that supports it. And now you have an icon and the name of the the program and like all the different settings for it. And I think that looks pretty slick. I think that's a neat way to do it. Let's see. Kana asks, Katie Plasma, is there anything like Gnome's Hot Corner in KDE? Do you mean like this thing? I guess I'm not sure what you mean by a hot corner, but I also don't use vanilla Gnome pretty much at any point. I think... If I'm remembering correctly, there is a, I think there's a way to turn on an application switcher that's a little bit fancier, a little bit more like what they had in the GNOME stuff last time I checked. I think we're actually pretty good on, this is close to the way I had my plasma configured in the Red Hat video. Um, obviously, I've made the fonts a little bigger because we're on YouTube and I want to make it pretty easy to read in a small screen. Um, on my regular desktop, these, these windows are smaller there and the icons are smaller because that's what I like. Um, so I'm skipping over that because I think it's pretty clear what you can do with it. Um, I don't like that default is just showing there. Is there a way to turn off default? I don't need it to tell me it's a default. I, it's fine. I'm, I'm being picky here at this point. Um, and pickiness isn't going to help anybody. So let's try settings. I vaguely remember that there is a workspace, a difference, like activity view or something like that. Okay, so walk through activities is made a tab. Maybe I have to create a new activity. So let's call it um, dictionary. I'm just making it up. There we go. Now if I switch. Okay, so this lets me switch between like l desktops and activities. So if I'm remembering correctly here, you know, I can have programs and We'll get started with Firefox here, and we'll go to Wikipedia. That's the least offensive website I saw on that list. Um, I say offensive because I'm personally offended by every other website that isn't Wikipedia, obviously. And um, what's something else? What is this one? YouTube. That's a website. Okay, so now if I switch... I like how Lo-Fi Girl is currently, like, the top viewing thing. That's, that's, that's fun. That's delightful. Okay, so we're going to leave these in kind of a weird, gloopy layout here. And then I'm going to, if I, I don't believe I can alt-tab between anything other than what's in this particular application 
um, activity. There we go. But then I can switch back to the default and now I'm on the default one. So like this can be useful if you have like gaming and you want one setup for gaming and then uh, like work and you want another setup for work. I know I had set up one for uh, video capture and one for everything else. And that was pretty slick. So yep, window tab will switch workplaces if you're using workplaces, which I don't think I was doing, or I've been doing activity. That's the thing. I never know the difference between activities and workplaces. Let's see if we can figure that out. Maybe they're the same thing. Oh, there's virtual desktops, which I like. But I prefer them in different rows. This is going to be weird because I only have one window. Yeah, so you can set this and then I can go to my second activity and swap here and then go back. This is in a weird place now. I would move that. Now at this point I want it on over on that side. And it's huge because I made everything big for YouTube. I forget how you can switch. Is there a key command? No, now I'm just hitting things. There, okay, it's control F1, F2, F3, F4 to switch between them by default. I modified the crap out of that. I didn't like that at all. And one of the things I did was I changed the hotkeys for this, where I think I went to window, KWIN, and, um, oh no, it was workspace. So I went to shortcut, nope, that's not there. Desktop? Yep, okay. Switch one desktop to the left and one desktop to the right. I think what I did was I set this one for Windows key down. No. Oh, wait. I'm going to say no to that. You can set it for Windows key down. I'm going to set it for Windows key page down. And then to, you know what? No, I'm going to do Windows key page up for this. And for here, I'm going to do Windows key page down. So now I can do that, which is kind of neat. So I can hold down the Windows key or the super key and go page down, page down, page up, page up to get back and forth. This kind of approximates what I was doing on Pop! OS. Of course, on Sway, it's I can just hold down super and then press one, two, three, four, five to go to each virtual desktop, which I've kind of grown accustomed to over the last week. Um, I, I think it's a lot of fun. Okay, so so that's that. Now at this point, I'm I'm thinking I just want to do a little bit of Q and A. I think I think that sounds like fun. Um, so I got a few minutes. It's five to two, so I figured we'd do this. And you know what? Actually, before we do Q and A, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to introduce a new segment to my channel for future videos, and this segment is going to be a shout out of some other channel that I'm watching right now. And I had an idea for one that that I think my audience doesn't you might not know but might appreciate. If you like my retro stuff where I'm exploring an old computer or something, there's a channel I want you to see. And that channel you can just search for on YouTube. Go find Taylor and Amy show. I have been deep diving their videos recently quite a bit, <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. It's it's low key relaxed, um, going through some retro machines and just exploring it and just kind of seeing like kicking the tires as I as I say on my channel. Um, and recently they've done a couple of videos about a system called the Mini Pet, which if you're unfamiliar, you might have seen my Commodore 64 video. Um, 
So you might be familiar with the Commodore family of products. And if you are, you know what a pet is. The Commodore pet was released at the same time as the Apple II. It's as old of a computer. And it is a phenomenal example of like early business oriented computing machines. We're talking basic. We're, we're talking like really early stuff. And I won't get too into it, but they did a full and complete like build and test of a kit version of this computer called the mini pet on their channel. It was absolutely wonderful. And they, they've done, they, if you go back through their history, they've got all kinds of fun, goofy stuff that they've done. And I just, I find them to be absolutely wonderful. So they're my first, uh, I don't know what I'm going to call this YouTube shout out, YouTuber shout out what I'm watching. I might go with what I'm watching. That's that, that might be a good, good name for it. But I, I absolutely love their stuff and I definitely recommend them to anybody. Go check out the Taylor and Amy show on YouTube. If you have time after this, just go watch those pet videos and then just have a lot of fun on their channel because it's super neat. Um, okay. So let's, let's check out. Somebody asked, how are you doing? I'm tired. I've been building this, this, system, this, this area here, I got a, I got saws and sawdust and all kinds of fun stuff, but, um, this is coming up. It's, it's, it's working out pretty well. Um, let's see what else I'm, I'm just going back through some of the questions. I think they rebranded workspaces to activities. Um, somebody says in the chat. Yep. I think that might've been what it was. Um, let's see. Uh, what do I prefer, a window manager or a desktop environment? If you have to ask, you might want a desktop environment. Um, I definitely think a window manager has a place, though, and I've been using one recently because I'm, I'm, I really like the tiling that I was introduced to in Pop! OS. That would be the biggest thing in my mind that would convince you of one versus the other. If there's something you're missing out of a desktop environment, particularly in like window layout or keyboard management. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a much easier time on a desktop environment unless you're chasing performance or, you know, something like that. If you have to ask, you should probably stick with a desktop environment until you know there's something that a tiling window manager or any other window manager does that you need. But that's just me. I tend to, to go that route. Um, let's see. What is my favorite NES game? Um, oh, that's, it's not an NES game, but my favorite one that I ever played was Galaga. Um, real big into Galaga. I've spent a lot of time playing Galaga on NES. Um, as far as games that were made for the NES, or at least NES and Famicom, it's probably the first Final Fantasy. Um, let's see, are there new tutorials incoming? Yes, um, there will be plenty of them. This, if you missed it at the beginning, I'm trying to finish this space specifically so I can record more. I'm also in the middle of winding down my uh, system administration and COBOL work so that I can focus more of my energy on this, but also um, just other creative pursuits, you know, thing like I, I've wanted to, to go back into um, being creative professionally, you know, doing the music and the voiceovers and the, the stuff that I used to do basically before, um, you know, not to date myself, but before the Great Recession happened, I had to go get a day job. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of trying to get back to that now. Let's see. Uh, the Lynx terminal web browser still works. It does, and it's the best web browser. That's the way it should be. Um, Addy says, Galaga is one of the games I play the most on my analog pocket. Love the analog pocket. And yes, Galaga is an excellent choice for that. Galaga is always a good one. Um, let's see. Do I use KDE Connect? Um, I love KDE Connect on Plasma and GS Connect on GNOME. Those are two that I've used quite extensively. Um, GNOME, in, in my case, being Pop! OS's version of GNOME. Um, I love what 
I can do with KDE Connect on Android. It's it's fantastic. Particularly, as was mentioned in the comment, being able to, when I get a phone call, it automatically pauses my media because I pretty much always have music playing. Um, that said, I've had some issues with it on Sway, just staying connected. And I think some of that, I might need to set it as like a, a service. I might need to set up a service to auto start it and to restart it on failure, um, which is a whole other thing. So I, that's the thing that's been kind of stopping me from, from jumping into it more recently, like in the last week. Um, but yeah, I've used KDE Connect for couple of years now on my mainline machines, and they're pretty good. Let's see. Um, any thoughts on Fedora Silver Blue? Uh, you know, I, I like what I'm seeing. I don't, at least last time I checked, which was 37, um, I didn't think it was ready yet. I wouldn't have recommended it to somebody who was a beginner at, at Linux or a beginner at Fedora. Um, I think immutable is probably the future. It's I think we're, we've kind of landed on that, at least for consumer Linux, like um, typical desktop Linux. And I think immutability has a lot of value there because for your average desktop user, I'm not talking about your average desktop Linux user. I'm talking about your average desktop user. They want a streamlined workflow, um, increasingly influenced now by tablets, by by phones, not not based on the old desktop application install administrator privileges system that we've all grown used to. And so I think that silver blue looks really cool and it could be the way to go. I think at this point it is the way to go. Um, is it ready yet? I don't know. I might try it again next cycle and just see what I think of it. I'll probably do a video on it at some point. Um, part of that is that I need to finish the space before I actually have time to do a video. Um, I should put the hat back on because I'm wrapping up here. Um, so yeah, the space is still under construction. Um, we have, in, and I'm working probably 50 hours a week on day job stuff right now. So uh, that's getting in the way. Um, I've had a surprisingly busy summer when it comes to work. And that's some of the reason there's been less um, regular videos coming out. But thanks to my patrons and thanks to people um, donating to the channel and just helping out in lots of various ways, I've been able to take a little bit more time off. You know, I was able to take time off for this today, which is excellent. And I'm going to be able to keep, you know, plugging away at this channel and just trying to do cool stuff for you all because that's what it's all about. Like, I really like the feedback that I get from you all. I love the comments and the 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 suggestions and the the discussions. I mean, it's dopamine, and I love dopamine. I mean, who doesn't? Um, it's just great, and like it's so uplifting and so positive. And you know, we hear so much negativity around the Linux space and the tech space and gatekeeping and and tech bros and you know, like all these things that people say are a problem. But I I feel like we've carved out a nice little space here, and I want to keep plugging away at at making this space something enjoyable for everybody. So hopefully. Once this literal space is finished, then the Linux Veronica Explains space that we're kind of creating and just the tech space in general will have some, some room to thrive. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I think I'm going to have to wrap it up here because this was awesome and I think that's a good note to end it on. So I, I appreciate everybody for sticking around in the stream. And as always, Linux is awesome, and so are you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.